So you guys get an identity management presentation again from me, and every year I do this, I try to find some way to make it uh, uh, less boring, right? Uh, I think in the previous presentation it was, I'm going to talk about something boring, which is documentation. And documentation is boring, but identity management is really boring. Uh, and so when I was thinking about this, I really wanted to think about the concept of orchestration. And, and anyone here who's been in the IT industry knows we talk about orchestration all the time. And so it's like, Dave, why are you talking about orchestration again? But what I want to do through this presentation is really talk about how identity management, specifically in the connected vehicle world, has become very similar to an orchestra and where those similarities are. So what does the term orchestra mean, right? And as I talk about how it is we manage all of these things, I want you to continue to think about an orchestra, right? And when you think about orchestras, lots and lots of things come to mind, right? Okay, people here probably, some of us at least played in an orchestra, right, in high school or in grade school, right, or did something uh, of that, right? Okay, we understand how the orchestra works. Um, we understand how it is a kind of bringing together a bunch of disparate instruments and, and such, right? So what does this have to do with identity management? So let's talk about the traditional way, right? Let's talk about what we've talked about previously. So three, four years ago when I presented here, what we were really talking about was owners interacting with their vehicles. Right? Owners are people, and so the discussion was about the fact of these people have to authenticate themselves. Right? The vehicle has to be identified in some way, and the owner is going to interact with the vehicle, or the vehicle is going to provide information to the owners. Right? It's a fairly straightforward sort of model. And so the discussion then was this idea of how do you authenticate a user? in a way that is easy that they can remember, so they can start their car, for example, or unlock their doors? How do you authenticate the vehicle so the vehicle can report to the owner of the vehicle things like tire pressure level, right, oil life, and, and things like, like that? And that, that's kind of the standard, right? The, the vehicle, in this case, was like a stand-in for a system, like we're used to, right? You authenticate and you go to a system, right? You do some actions and information get sent back to you, right? The only difference is, is what you had is you had vehicle uh, as opposed to systems. And that model was interesting, right? Uh, until what ended up happening is we introduced things, right? Now we really introduced two sets of things. About three years ago, we introduced all of these external systems, right? What we really call the owner ecosystem. So it used to be the vehicle ecosystem. This was a personal relationship between me and my car. Now what it was is a personal relationship between my vehicle and my ecosystem, right? It's a little bit like getting married. So you don't just marry the person, you have to marry the family. So now the way it works is my car has to interface with Twitter, and it has to interface with Facebook, and it has to interface with my Gmail, and it may interface with other things, navigation types of things that are in the cloud, along with the authentication that has to be done so that I can do the same thing we did in the previous slide, right? Interact with the vehicle in such a way that I have the ability to control that vehicle in, in, in some way. But we also then have added things. So now what I would like is I'd like it so that when my car pulls into the driveway, it opens my garage door. And honestly, what I don't want is when my car pulls in the driveway, I'd rather have it not open my neighbor's garage door. Maybe I would like it to do that, but my guess is he wouldn't want it to do that, right? Maybe it's going to interface with my nest and be able to, as I drive off, be able to do something like set the auto away automatically on the nest as opposed to waiting for there to be lack of motion in the house because you know that all the cars are gone. So, those types of interactions have become really important. So now I have 
vehicles that have to associate with systems. I have users who have to associate with vehicles because they're owners. I have things that have to associate. And oh, by the way, I'd like to make the user thing more complicated by basically saying I have multiple users of the car. I may have one owner, and that owner may have certain privileges, but the user may be the person who's driving it. So my wife can drive my car, and my kids can drive my car, but I don't want my kids to get my tweets, and I don't want my kids to read my Facebook, and I certainly don't want to get their tweets or read their Facebook. Um, and oh, by the way, I'm the one that gets to park in the garage, and so when the kids basically drive up the driveway, I don't want the garage door to open because then they'll think they can park in the garage, and I don't want them to be able to park in the garage. So I have this whole interaction now that I have to deal with, right, which makes life much, much more complicated. The problem is it's actually more complicated than that because we don't just interact have things that interact directly with my vehicle, they're interacting on my behalf. So my Nest is the Nest that is owned by Dave Miller, and the Nest may do something on my behalf, and it is the provisioning of what I can do that allows the Nest to do something or not do something, right? The interaction between me and my, uh, my my home automation may be dependent upon who I am in that ecosystem. So for example, I don't necessarily want the outside lights to go on as I'm driving into the neighborhood, but I would like it when my wife is driving into the neighborhood. Now, why wouldn't I want it when I was driving into the neighborhood? Well, for all of you here who remember non-connected vehicles, and all of you here who remember high school, how many of you here remember having a party at your house? And how many here remember when your parents came home unexpectedly and you had zero warning and they basically caught you with a party at your house? Wouldn't it be great if my kids knew when I was on my way home from the lake house up north? Not for me, great for them. So I may want to provision that on and off, right? So context is now important for the users. The context of the things are important for the users. And oh, by the way, sometimes I interact through a thing. So a cell phone is a thing, and it is the association of me knowing the PIN number on my phone and the fact that I have that phone that allows me to, for example, unlock my car. So now I'm interacting through things. To make it more complicated than that, we now have to think about timing. So there are many things where in order for event Z to occur, event A and B and C and D had to have occurred previously. So the simplest example of this is, if you would like to start your car from your phone, you have to have first registered your phone. To register your phone, you have to have first logged into the website and gave the phone number of the phone that you want to register to prove that you own that phone so the phone is registered so you can assign it a PIN so you can actually type that PIN number in so it can start your car, right? That is a sequence of provisioning events. You don't get to just download the app and say, trust me, this is my car, I'll point it at it and I can start it, right? There's lots of sequences of events that you would look at and determine how you would provision those sequences in a way, right, that makes sense, right? Does it make sense to, uh, to uh, uh, interact with my, uh, with my garage door at the same time that uh, the garage knows that there's already two cars in the garage? Why would I open the garage door if the garage is already full? It doesn't make any sense, right? That is a sequence of events kind of kind of thing, right? So it's complicated. To make it more complicated with connected vehicle, right, I talked about this idea that we have owners and we have users of vehicles, but we have a whole bunch more than that, right? So now what we have is we have constituents. So the way that it works is, and we've heard this from our OEM partners, they would like connectivity to that fleet of vehicles that technically they don't own anymore. 
right? You know, the old model for selling vehicles was a sell it and forget it model, right? I sell to you and as far as I'm concerned, you are now dead to me uh, until you wanna come back and buy another car. That's not the way it works anymore. Now I sell to you and I would love to be able to get telematics information about how that car is behaving in different situations so that I can reduce warranty costs, right? So I can do other things related to, to giving you a better experience with that vehicle, right? My dealership would like to be connected to my car too. So when the check engine soon light comes on, they would have the ability to say, I can diagnose that. Maybe I could send you an email saying, hey, I saw your check engine soon lights came on. It actually isn't a big deal. We see this all the time. We have the part in stock. If you're available next Tuesday, you can come in and we can do it in 15 minutes, right? So, so they get some action. I, as the owner, get some input. For those of you who have seen what part manufacturers are doing now, we now have smart parts in our car. So the folks at Bosch may want their powertrain to communicate directly to them because they have a smart powertrain, okay? But on the other hand, the braking system wouldn't communicate to Bosch. So now what I have is I have a data stream from this vehicle that goes to multiple places, all specifically small. Everyone has a role and somebody has to be able to manage that role. All right, so what does that have to do with an orchestra? Because that's what I started with, is this is like an orchestra. So if you think about it, and I'm sure you guys have kind of uh, you know, you know, seen this connection, right? Imagine the people are the musicians, right? So the people that are involved, the OEM people, the help desk people, the owners, the users, the fleet managers, these are the musicians. The things, which includes the car, the smart parts, the uh, Nest device, my uh, garage door opener, the uh, system I have to access, these are the instruments that are played in context of those people, right? The groups of folks, right? My group of people who can drive my car, right? The help desk I may own, those folks, right? When acting together in concert, they're like the sections right, the percussion, the woodwinds, and, and such, right? The score that we're gonna play, think of that as kind of the rules engine, okay? What are the set of rules? Does a dealership get to get unfettered access to where my car is at any time? Don't think so, right? But I'm okay with a dealership getting access to the information when my check engine soon light comes on, but it's none of their business where I am necessarily, right? So think of the score as the rules that you have to do, right? The orchestration of all of this, the ability to give the right people the right information at the right time, that is actually the music that is when we bring it all together. And I'm introducing this new concept, right? We used to call it an identity hub, we used to call it a rules engine, but think of this central spot as a conductor, right? A conductor of an identity orchestra, making sure that the right information gets to the right place. So, I put Tada in here because it's kind of musical, but I put Tada in here more specifically because of my granddaughter, all right, who is very mischievous, and uh, one day she stole a, a can of silicon spray and was sitting in my driveway spraying it on the ground. And I went up to her and said, Riley, what are you doing? And she looks down and she looks up at me and goes, ta-da. <laughs> so I don't know how you can be mad at that. So I wanted to put that in there. But this is what we see as the identity conductor. Now, you can build this yourself, right? We believe this is something we have, right? But it's more than one thing. It's not a point solution. Identity players will say, it's all about identity. I can authenticate anything and I can tell you what it can do. IoT players say, oh, I can connect to all kinds of IoT networks and I can orchestrate the data between those IoT networks, right? Web developers, right, systems say, oh, I can write you a web application so people can actually go to that, right? API providers are gonna talk about the fact that I can create APIs so that you can write mobile apps. You have to have all of this to conduct this identity orchestra. You need to have the ability to do an API development platform because more and more we're writing things on apps. You have to have some sort of portal where people can go. You have to have a robust identity and access management system. People have to authenticate 
Things have to authenticate, systems have to authenticate and be associated, right? You have to have a management and orchestration layer to orchestrate where the data goes, right? If I'm getting a stream off of the vehicle, does it go to the right place at the right time, right? And then obviously you do need an Internet of Things platform. So what do we learn from orchestra, right? Identity is no longer about one owner, vehicle, system, or thing. It's about all of that together. People are going to bring more and more of their hardware ecosystem to the vehicle. I'm gonna have a more connected house. I'm gonna to wanna to connect to my Amazon Echo. I'm gonna to wanna to connect to my Nest ecosystem. I may wanna to connect to my Hue light bulb system, right? I wanna to connect to my connected garage. Plus, oh, by the way, I still wanna Twitter and tweet and do all of those sorts of things, right? It is interesting that when orchestras started, right, in the classical era, there was no conductor. The reason they needed a conductor is as they got larger, the folks in the back, the timpani actually was off beat because of the amount of time it took them to hear the notes from the front. And so they put a conductor in at that point in time to orchestrate this whole orchestra. That's the point we're getting to from a complexity standpoint, is that ability to be able to bring all that together. Identity today involves the interaction between all of these devices, and it is bringing them together that makes it a symphony and makes it successful. If my connected vehicle becomes another walled garden in my life, then I will use some of it, but it will not become the hub of the way that I connect myself. So if I have my, I have my connected vehicle ecosystem over here, I have my Google ecosystem here, which is a email uh, and stuff. I have an Apple phone, so I'm part of the Apple ecosystem, uh, and I uh, and I happen to use. Uh, 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 some security system, so I have that security system for home automation, right? And they kind of talk to each other, but they don't interact. It's not going to be an experience where people are going to embrace it. Right? And, and they will either find ways around it, right? Or they won't pick your device because you don't, you don't interact, right? This is where we think that just like with any good orchestra, you need a conductor to be able to lead that orchestra. They are basically inspiring and driving the, sc the score. There actually was an uh, argument in the music industry as to whether conductors were really necessary. Are conductors leading the orchestra, or is the orchestra leading the conductor? And the uh, University of Maryland did a study last year where they actually put LEDs on the end of the baton of the conductor and put LEDs on the end of all the bows of the, uh, of the string instruments, right? And then they used a computer program to watch all of those things. And what they found is the conductor actually precedes the stringed instruments by a very, very small amount. It is a lead and follow kind of model. And so that idea of having someone to conduct all of those things becomes a hugely important thing, right? The other thing is the conductor has to be able to deal with disparate groups. Now, disparate can mean separate, which is cool, right? So that's part of it. But in this case, what I mean by disparate is, if you think of a conductor of an orchestra, right, I have the folks that are the woodwinds and right, the folks that are maybe a brass section and a folks that are, uh, are the string section and those are a different group of people who, by the way, play differently, their scores are completely different, how often they play is different. Think of this in the same way as what I have is, I have a Apple ecosystem and I have an Android ecosystem and I have a cloud-based ecosystem and now I have at least five different connected thing, ecosystems, or technologies, or standards. The conductor needs to bring those together so they can work together. Otherwise, all you have is a string quartet, for example, as opposed to a full orchestra. So the decision that you really need to make is the decision of who's going to be the conductor of your identity orchestra. And if you really want to be successful, we believe that having that conductor is going to be key to the, to the future. And with that, I'd like to thank you. Thank you very much.